them make their own decisions and make their own decisions to judge the fruit. Instead of forcing people, this is the real fruit, that's bad fruit. I'm forcing you to come to the real good fruit. That's what people are doing when they're taking the place of judge, the judge of God. They're saying, nope, you're disqualified to be in ministry. And it's literally not giving people even free will. Let people have itching ears if that's what they want. Let people be lukewarm if that's what they want. Let people do what they want. Free will. So it's time, yo, for the Apostle Catherine Creek. <laughs> Who gave this woman apostle? Okay, because she wanted to be an actress, so that did not work for her. She was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go and start scamming these people in the church by telling them that I'm an apostle. I mean, even like when she's preaching, whatever, teaching, I'm like, you know what? I'm not even convinced. At least Sarah Jakes can convince you, right? Because with her emotionalism and everything, you'd be like, oh, bring it, Sarah. This one, I'm like, I don't see the, the, the attraction to whatever else she's preaching because she doesn't have, you know, she doesn't have that, that hook that's going to hook these people, you know? Sarah has it. I understand why she fools people. <laughs> Priscilla Shire definitely has it, okay? <laughs> Catherine Craig, I'm like, what exactly? Okay, so every time whenever she's saying, you can actually just pick it like, okay, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, you know? At least the other girls, they try to, you know, they try to hide. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's take a listen to um, what Catherine Craig was preaching. The message was uh, purity in the church. I don't know what church, okay? She's an apostle. I don't know who ordained her as an apostle, but that's what she refers herself to. People literally do worship her, okay? I'm like, why are you receiving worship? Okay, why are you receiving worship? So <clears throat> let's take a listen to how all this went down, guys. There's this strong language of you hypocrites and God commands us to not judge others. He even commands us. This, this decision is not supposed to be you being a judge. This decision is supposed to be for your spiritual health. So you are supposed to judge, but I want to use a different word, make decision about a person based on your spiritual health. So you're supposed to be judging or making this decision, do they have fruits or not, when it comes to where you're called to be planted, servants of God. Like, where, like should I be planted here or here? That's where you're supposed to be doing this. And also for the people in your life who you're supposed to bring in close to your life. That's when we're supposed to judge, but it's not in the meaning of being a judge and being critical. It's in the meaning of making a decision for your spiritual health, just for your own personal spiritual health, not to make a video or a campaign to judge someone in the office of a judge and to speak your own opinions and judgments. So it's supposed to be, I see fruits here in this person. They are surrendered to God. I see the fruits of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And so I make this decision led by the Holy Spirit using wisdom, looking at the fruits to choose to bring them in close into my life, to be like the three disciples that Jesus brought in close. I will bring this person in close. I've made this judgment. So this lady wants to pit us against the scriptures, right? And yes, you're calling out like, don't, pe don't want people to make a video and all those things, right? Because yeah, you know that people are going to make videos. And rightfully so. How are you going to, if you, I says that you're just, you're just supposed to measure with the fruit, right? How are you going to pick a good fruit and a bad fruit? What criteria are you going to use? Guess what? You're going to judge. You're going to use judgment to see that this is a good fruit and this is a bad fruit. So as a result, you're going to judge. There is nothing wrong with judging. We are to judge. The scripture calls us as much to do the same thing. Not only that, it actually said we are going to judge angels. So what more the matters that pertain to us if we're going to judge angels? Hmm? Not only that, like whenever we are judging, we are not judging according to our opinions. We are judging according to the scriptures. You shall know them by their fruits. Okay, we are fruit inspectors. So we know this is a bad fruit, this is a good fruit, according to the scriptures. That's it. So when people are saying their opinions, you, th that shouldn't faze anybody. 
But if they're saying things that's not in the scripture and people are saying things according to the scripture, absolutely, we're going to believe that. Notice, most of these false teachers, they always have an issue with people who are calling them out. Okay? Remember, discernment is a gift. You are supposed to be discerning. Okay? You're supposed to be discerning. They have issue with people who are calling out this false teaching. They want us, they always call for unity. That's one, one mark that you have to keep for the false teachers. They're going to emphasize unity and they're going to so call like, you know, don't be judging. Okay? We cannot unify. We, we, we unify in truth. So if there's no truth, there's no unity. But they tend to think that you can unify even with all these differences, right? These acumenicals, that's, that's a problem. So according to her, it says we shouldn't be judging. Like, no, no, we're going to judge you. The scripture says that we're not on our way to judge. We are to expose the deeds of darkness, right? Expose these unsound teachings. Because remember, the false teachers are not coming with pitchforks. Jude, what does Jude say? It's like they have secretly crept in to spy in. You're not going to know who they are. They're going to look like you, smell like you, talk like you. Okay, but you are going to know because you have discernment. If you don't know your Bible, false teachers are going to fool you. That's exactly what's going to happen. But if you're in your word, if you're looking into the scriptures, you know what? Sooner or later, you'll be like, no, I'm out of here. This is no matching with the scriptures. This is no matching with the scriptures. So no, they always use that issue to make you like, okay, don't judge. So you should be off guard. No, 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 no. Stay on course. Okay, stay on business. Okay, stay on business. So... No, no, no. And she knows, like, okay, she's out there. She's just saying, judging, 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 because it sounds so good. Because, like, hey, I mean, do you want to be judged? Nobody wants to be judged. But the scripture says we are to judge. <laughs> so let's continue, guys, with uh, Apostle. <laughs> this assessment, this decision. And where you are planted, this is a true servant of God. I see the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the character, the fruits of the Spirit, and the fruits in their ministry. I'm seeing the fruits in my own life so far with what I've received, with the video I watched, how I received. I'm seeing fruits. So I am making this decision led by the Holy Spirit. You will know them by the fruits. I know. I make this judgment. I make this decision. I will come here and be planted. You see another, another minister. I don't see the fruits. I see pride there. I don't see deliverance happening there. You make the judgment, but really decision. Okay, I just won't receive from there. I won't watch the videos there. I won't go there. And that's it. It ends there. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what God's talking about. And when you, and now these scriptures make sense. There are so many scriptures that seemingly contradict each other just because people have taken them out of context. But the Bible doesn't contradict each other, contradict itself. Scriptures don't contradict themselves when you have the proper revelation and look at the context and don't make the decision of what the scripture is speaking based on your selfish ambitions and self-centeredness. Oh, I feel uncomfortable for women to preach. So I'm going to choose to twist the scripture and not look, at the, not look at the context and make the judgment women can't preach. Is that true, guys? Is that true? First Timothy 2 12. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. There she is. She calls herself an apostle. She's preaching and teaching to a mixed audience. Now she wants to tell us that we are the ones who are twisting the scriptures. Huh? Who's twisting scriptures over here? She's the one who's twisting scriptures. We're just taking the scriptures on its first value. That's it. We are just sticking to the scriptures and measuring what she's telling us. It's not matching. So in her mind, it's just our own opinion to say that women cannot, uh, cannot teach. Women can teach according to Titus 2, right? Women can teach, okay? Older women are to teach younger women, right? How to love their husband, how to manage their homes. Right? We are to, to do that. Absolutely. But when it comes to teaching men in church, when the church is gathered, Women are not supposed to be doing that according to God's word. But Catherine wants to accuse us that we are the ones who are being judging. Who is being judging over here? Huh? <laughs> Using the word of God to twist and take it to mean the opposite of what it's saying and, and literally lead people astray by doing this. Very dangerous. So this is the meaning of the scripture of judging righteously. 
Nowhere in scripture does it say you can take the place of God. And man, we, we really got to humble ourselves. You know, the Pharisees were so wrong about Jesus simply because they didn't know everything. I mean, Jesus was coming and bringing a new thing. Yes, they were the leaders at that time, but they weren't God. Okay, so uh, a false equivalence that she's making over here, okay? She's assuming, who's claiming that? Who's claiming that? Not even the Pharisees did not claim that, okay? So that's a lie. And this is also a misconception that most Christians do have as far as the Pharisees are concerned, okay? Jesus, what does Jesus say in Mark, right? Do uh, listen to what, they, to listen to what the Pharisees are teaching you. Just don't do what they do because they do sit in the seat of Moses. So the teaching that they were teaching, it wasn't bad. They were just not practicing it. The Pharisees were not practicing what they were preaching. So Jesus is telling his people like, no, you know, listen to what they're saying. You know, just don't practice whatever else they're doing. So it's not like the Pharisees, we are, you know, we are all these uh, evil men walking around, right? We have Nicodemus, okay, came to Jesus, was, you know, I think like one of Jesus' disciples. So they were, you know, Paul was a Pharisee. Okay, he was a Pharisee. So they were, you know, other Pharisees, remember even the other Pharisee who, uh, in the Sanhedrin, I forgot, I forgot his name. He was like, you know what? Who laid like, okay, don't, if these people, they, when they were judging the apostles, right? If these people, whatever they're doing is, of the, is, is not of God, it's going to die down. But if it's from God, you're going to find yourself fighting against God. So we understand when people make a reference to the Pharisees and everything. But if this issue is coming from uh, Kath and Creek, I'm like, no, 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 no. We need more clarity from you, especially a woman who calls herself to be an apostle. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> no, let's continue. It wasn't the, 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 the time when Jesus was going to return and the, the body of Christ was looking perfect. No. Jesus hadn't even come yet. There was a lot of, a lot of stuff to be done they, they, in, the, in, the, in the church. Hallelujah. So they had old wine. And God was coming and bringing a new thing, bringing new wine. And to them, he looked so off. He looked so wrong. It was so different from what they were doing. The disciples weren't fasting the way, the disciples of Jesus weren't fasting the way they were fasting. Jesus was going against the word of God in so many different ways, it seemed. But they were the ones completely wrong. All of their judgments were completely wrong because they were simply missing a lot of revelation. And their taking their position with pride and self-righteousness of being ju a judge made them to miss all of this revelation that could have, they could have received and received salvation and received the new wine an abundant life from Jesus. Amen? And so it's the same thing today, okay? It's the same thing today. Jesus and his revival is coming in a new way. He's bringing new wine. He's bringing new revelation that we need in order for us to look like the Acts Church again. We need new, the body of Christ needs new revelation. They are, 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 are not understanding scripture accurately. They are not leaving room for the Holy Spirit to do a new thing. They are not, they are not looking at themselves, unable to walk in the power of God, not seeing people be free, and they're not humbling themselves I'm missing something. I'm missing revelation. If you're not seeing the power of God work in your life, if you're, not in, if you're a minister, if you're a servant of God, if you're not seeing that happen, if you're not seeing the power of God move, people be delivered, people be healed, you're missing revelation. Just like the, just like the Pharisees were. That's why we, we cried out for revival for so long and why we rejoice now that revival's here. Because we need enough. So what does she mean that we are missing the revelation? What, what is she talking about? We already have the word of God. God has already revealed himself in scripture. The canon is closed. This is where God reveals himself. We can pray for revival for sure, absolutely. But what exactly are we missing? So far, I'm not hearing any verse. Okay, she's not saying, okay, this is what we are studying. We are reading this chapter, this verse, nothing. This is just, she's just making her own thing. And there's people sitting over there. They're just eating it up. I'm like, at least pretend. I, I don't know. You know, just pretend that you're doing something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So at least maybe some of us can be fooled by what you're saying. So far, there's nothing. Okay? There's nothing. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.10, uh, 5, right? For the weapons of our warfare are not of flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion 
raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when obedience is complete. So these are the things that we, we, we are called to be doing. Right? We, these false doctrines, they need to be demolished because they're leading so many people astray. And she's out here and she does actually have a very huge following, okay? So I don't understand, like, what is it about her that people do follow her? I can understand Sarah Jakes, right? This is the TD Jakes. They have an empire. There's something that's already there. But this lady, man, I was very surprised to see the amount of following that she has, you know? It, it does, to me, it's, it's very cultish, especially when I saw them literally worshipping her you know, like coming on the knees and then, you know, she's blessing them. I'm like, what is this? You know, even men were doing that as well. You know, I was disturbed by that issue. So I'm like, we, we, we have problems. We have problems. Okay. Not only the power of God, but we needed revelation. We needed to hear God speak a fresh word. What are we missing? What's the revelation we're missing? What are the keys of the kingdom we're missing that the disciples had, that Peter had? that Paul had, the way Peter was walking in the power of God, there's nowhere in scripture that says that we're not, we're not gonna be able to do what they did. They're supposed to be our example. We're supposed to be just like Peter and Paul and all the apostles. And we're supposed to go glory to glory. Amen? At every 10, the things that she's saying, it just doesn't match, okay? Uh, we are to follow Paul as Paul is following Christ. We are to imitate Christ, not to imitate apostles. Not only that, these guys were raising people from the dead. Are you all going to be raising people from the dead? No, you won't, right? So this idea of like, okay, w when these people are saying like we are to be like the apostles, they're just not saying that you should imitate their godly lifestyle, right? They are, they are saying that you should be doing the things that they were doing. No, we're not going to be able to do the things they were, they were doing. We are not apostles, okay? They were apostles. That's why they were able to do what they were doing because of the office that they held. Not only that, the scripture calls us we are to be like Christ. We are to be like Christ, okay? And yes, you, you're going to be transformed from glory to glory, but you need to be like Christ. So the whole body of Christ, if they're not looking like Peter or Paul, I mean, if the leaders at least are not looking like Peter or Paul, quite simply, that means you're missing revelation. How to access, access the power of God. How to be a vessel that God wants to put the power of God in. And how to access it once God decides he wants to put it in you. How do you make sure you're positioning yourself right to receive it? And how to adequately walk in the power of God. What's the mysteries of the spiritual realm? What makes demons obey the way they obeyed Paul, but they wouldn't obey the sons of Sceva? These are revelations that we need. And so that therefore will mean that ministry will look different than it has in the revival. It means that casting out of demons will look different. It means altar calls or way of uh, leading people to Jesus. Salvation will look different. It means every aspect of church may look a little different. It means we're missing new wine. That means that there's going to be old wine there. That means that there's going to be religion there. That means there's a lot of things we're doing out of religious tradition and not following the Holy Spirit. So that means that when we cry out for revival, that means we're crying out for change. That means we're crying out for the new. That, that means we're crying out to be done with tradition because tradition isn't getting us anywhere. Religion isn't getting us anywhere. Religion isn't setting people free. That's what we're crying out for when we cry out for revival. So don't, so don't be judgmental when revival comes and it looks like change and it looks like new. And it looks like confounding you. And it looks like getting rid of tradition. It looks like getting rid of religion. Do you want revival or <laughs> All lies will be exposed. That's all. <laughs> That's all. All lies will be exposed. Guys, she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything at all. Okay? And then the people are clapping over there. The stuff they say, it doesn't even hold any water. Okay? They say, we need new revelation. They, she always brings that back up. Where is this new revelation going to come from? Huh? Where is it going to come from? So far, I, I'm not even hearing any scriptures, whatever she's saying. Okay? And people are, did you see the people in the audience? So listening so attentively. I mean, guys, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Huh? 
how can you sit under this garbage this is this is garbage teaching this is garbage teaching hallelujah revival comes and so many that cried out for it become judgmental of the revival just like the pharisees worshiping god then god comes in human form and nothing but judgment and no receiving you know, and so, so that's, I mean, when you can just read the word of God, when you can just see like what the Pharisees were doing to Jesus, you'll grow in wisdom and real, like judgment will not be a part of you. You'll be like, I don't want to be like the Pharisees judging Jesus. I don't understand this. I don't get this. I don't get this way of casting out of demons. I don't get this way of doing ministry, but I don't want to be like the Pharisee. I could be wrong. This could be Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, okay, so I, 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 what, what, what I'm sharing with you today is to really help you, have revel, help you to have revelation of why, why we shouldn't judge. Because God wants us to have understanding. Understanding helps us to be more like him and follow him. Because when we understand why God, you know, it's like <laughs> when you understand why God tells us to not sleep around and to not have sex before marriage and outside of marriage, and <laughs> there's, you're opening up doors to demons. You're opening up doors to demonic soul ties. So like, it becomes even more compelling to follow God in love when you understand how perfect his law is, how beautiful his instructions are. When we don't have that understanding, it's easy to be deceived by, tempted by the enemy. But the more revelation we have, the more understanding we, understanding we have of God's love, God's love in his word, why he's directing us to do this and do that, the more we desire in our heart to follow God, to follow what he's commanding. That's how God wants it to be. I will gladly do this, Lord, because not just because I love you, but because this is the way to true life. I get that revelation now. This is really the way to true life. It's not just words. Amen. And so um, this is going to help you withstand the temptations of the devil when you're tempted to judge as God's opening your eyes today. And I want to share another like, reason why it's so important we don't judge. We are all one body. We are all on one team. And we are called to cheer each other on. And we are all in different stages and seasons of our walk with God. Some of you are very spiritually mature, but you didn't used to be spiritually mature. You had to grow to get there. Why would you be judging a baby when you're an adult, when you used to be a baby? Why are you judging a baby for being a baby? Right? We're, we're not enemies. We're on one team. Not just, not just us in this house right here, but every person who says that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, even if they're deceived. Listen to what she's about to say on this one, okay? Every, she, you know, she's waked the crowd, her audience, to where she is right now. And then she says things that would just be like, what? Okay? And when people are judging, we understand, like, you know, people are in different walks of life. Absolutely, right? Iron sharpens iron. So we disciple each other. We, uh, we point each other to the scriptures. Even the scriptures, you know, it's not like when somebody is a baby Christian, they are not supposed to stay as a baby, right? You're going to see that there's something wrong when a baby is not growing. So even as a baby Christian, you are supposed to be growing. So if you're still remaining as a baby, like that needs to be checked. The Paul was doing, the, uh, even Hebrews says the same thing, right? You know, you're still back, uh, you're still uh, drinking milk, right? By now you should be eating meat. So we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those are the things that we're supposed to be doing. The scripture calls us as much. But she's out here giving excuses. Like, no, you know. We are not judging somebody for being a baby Christian. We are judging for somebody for staying as a baby Christian. Because there's no reason to stay as a baby Christian. That's the difference. But obviously, she, she, she's not going to make any of those distinctions. Even Does she even believe in that there's distinctions? I doubt it. Okay? I doubt it. So, <laughs> oh, man. Um... Okay, so let's hear to what, uh, how she, she's find a way to twist uh, even more of the scriptures over here. Okay, let's continue. If their eyes are not opened up, even if they're speaking against the work of God, we're, we're all on one team still. We're all one family. We all 
all should want the best for them. We all should want eyes to open up. And um, you don't know what people have gone through. You don't know people's past. You don't know why they are the way they are. If people are speaking the, against God, against the word of God, they, they are not in your team. They need to be corrected. They definitely need to be corrected. And if they don't correct the record, like, no, no, no. Why would they be speaking against our Lord? This is why we're doing this video and pointing out, like, no, Catherine, you are speaking against the scriptures. You're speaking against what God has said. Clear as so. So, no, <laughs> you are not in our team. You need to stop that and then join the team. Repent before you, uh, you join the team. So, so it's wrong to have this judgmental eye of, like, why can't they change? Why are they full of so much anger? Why do they lash out on me, for example? But maybe you had so much more of a pure past than them. Maybe you, you know, didn't have all of the uh, attacks and all of the generational curses of anger that that person had. You didn't have all of the trauma and abuse that led to all this demonic oppression and huge stronghold on a person's life that they had. So why are you judging them? You're not in the place to judge. You aren't on the same level as them, for example. It's so silly to judge when you can have this perspective. Amen? Oh, guys. Oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> Catherine Crick. Oh, well, she just said so much stuff, okay? So I guess the topic of all this thing was about, like, okay, don't judge, okay? Just let people be whatever else they can be. Last weekend was the Flourish Conference in Los Angeles, and God had spoken to me that it was going to be like the day of Pentecost. So I was more expectant than I had ever been in my entire life, but God literally far exceeded my expectations. About 1,000 people came, and they came from 33 nations and 40 states. The first session, I came in for worship, and it was like something I'd never experienced right away. To see so many people from all over the world so united, in heart, just wanting Jesus to have his way, and so full of faith, expectancy, excitement for Jesus to come in power, that purity of heart, it, it moved me to tears. For every session, God delivered so many people. I've been so humbled and blessed to be able to minister many times over the past few years and see God move in such power every time. But this was like something I had never experienced in my life. People were being delivered like popcorn left and right all over the place. In the balcony, I saw people share videos of people being delivered everywhere. Bodies just falling over, falling back in their seats and in the aisles of the, the theater. At the impartation session, it was the most holy experience I have ever had in my life. God's presence and his power was so thick and moved upon every person. There were bodies falling back all over, receiving impartation of anointing and just laying there and having encounters with Jesus. People weeping in God's presence. I feel God's tears of joy and gratitude. Because so many people have rejected him. As they rejected him in the, in the times when he was on this earth. So many have rejected him in his mood. It's so hard for me to take this lady seriously because everything that she's doing, I'm always seeing that she's being manipulative. She's uh, working an angle. There's something that she's working on, something that she's doing. I simply cannot trust it. Okay. So according to her, she says, you know, God told her, you know what I mean? God told this whatsoever. Like, no, God has already spoken in the word. Okay, every time when people say God spoke to me, God told me, what you're saying is that God audibly told you something. God audibly spoke to you something, which means whatever God says, that is the word of God. So you are to obey it and so is everybody else. But we understand God has spoken through his word. When these false teachers are saying God told me, they're actually saying that they are receiving direct revelation from God. So this is extra revelation that they're receiving from God, right? But like, you know, we know God has spoken through his word. You can, you know, uh, uh, you know, you have come to understanding, you know what I mean? You've been enlightened, you know, you can use those words, right? Through the scriptures, through the scriptures. But, you know, this God spoke to me, God told me like, you know, <laughs> that's pretty much, you know, that's a her her heretical stuff. But obviously this, these people, this is what they believe in. So if you're not getting those things, the, it's associated like, okay, you know, you need to be closer. There's something that's missing in your life. There's something that you're not doing right. That's why you're not receiving 
uh, these blessings, as they call them, okay? So her thing was always like, you don't judge, don't judge, right? First Corinthians 1, 6, 3, right? Okay. I'll actually start from verse 1. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? If the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try travel cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why don't you lay them before those who are, have no standing in the church? Okay. Obviously, over here, the context is Paul is just saying, you know, if you have matters, just adjudicate them between yourselves. Okay. Don't just be rushing to go and sue your brother and everything. But what is it saying at the core of it? Because you guys are believers, because you guys are Christians, you should be able to make righteous judgment. You should be able to ascertain this person is wrong, this person is right, you, you owe this person this much. Like, you know, you should be able to do those things. So all those entails, uh, those are entails judging. Okay. Matthew 7, 1 is not saying that we shouldn't be judging. We have to be judging righteously, you know, do righteously. Okay, take out the log in your eyes before you're looking and someone else is fake. So if you're judging somebody, but you're also doing the same thing, then you're a hypocrite. Okay, then you're a hypocrite. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be judging. So those are the things like, okay, you see like, okay, you know, let me take care of this area of my life, right? Then you can uh, be a helper to the other person. Like, you know what, brother, you know, I used to do these things. This is how God has helped me. I'm telling you, stop doing these things. Like, those are the things that we're supposed to be doing. Iron sharpens iron, right? We confess to sin to uh, to each other. But she wants to create like, no, just leave these people. Let them do everything else they're doing, okay? Don't mind them. Like, no, no, no. The Bible says otherwise. So we either listen to the scriptures or we listen to uh, Apostle Catherine Creek. <laughs> so whenever we are judging believers, fellow believers, we are, we are going with the spirit of division. It's the devil's aim to cause division. It's the devil's aim to beat down believers so they're not strong and knowing their worth and that God loves them. So this is his aim to work through you when you do this, if you do this, to, judge, to, to beat down another believer with the judgment. But we're all one body, the Bible says. So when you're beating down your foot, you're harming yourself. You're not just harming yourself, but you're harming the whole body of Christ. Whew, that's heavy, right? So truly, you need to see it this way. When you are about to judge somebody, know that you're harming your own self and not just affecting you, but the whole body of Christ. This is true for any believer you judge, but it's even more so the case. Like, even more harm is coming to the body of Christ and division if you judge leaders. It says in um, Philippians 1.15, some, this is Paul speaking, some it is true are actually preaching Christ out of envy and rivalry toward me for no better reason than a competitive spirit or misguided ambition. But others are preaching out of goodwill and a loyal spirit toward me. Paul's saying they're preaching out of, a, others are preaching out of a loyal spirit towards me. Paul was a general. Paul was called to be a leader of many spiritual children. Timothy and many others. And so the, the, the people in that time, they were called to be loyal spiritual sons and daughters of Paul and to not to be independent, but be a true, humble, submitted servant, spiritual son and daughter of Paul. Not to be competitive, not to scatter, divide and draw others to themselves. Poison. This is poison, guys. That's not what that text is about. That's not what it even means. What she's doing, uh, she must be reading from the Message Bible, which is not a Bible, by the way. What she's trying to do, this is manipulation tactics. Okay? She's telling the congregation they're not supposed to be judging. Where does it say that in Scripture? So when Paul was confronting Peter, even Barnabas was carried away. Was Paul judging? Because Peter was the leader, right? So was Paul judging? So if Paul can do that to Peter, so we shouldn't say anything about our leaders when they are going astray, when they are misapplying the scriptures. We are just supposed to be loyal, even when they are misleading us. And then like even Paul, when Paul is talking about in Philippians, he says, 
there's some are preaching Christ out of envy, out of rivalry, right? Almost kind of like jabbing at Paul. But Paul, what did he say? He says, you know what? I don't care. So long as what? Christ is being preached. So Paul was rejoicing because the word of God was going forth. Despite whatever their personal issues that they had. But Catherine wants us to believe. Like, no, no, no. We shouldn't judge the leaders. <laughs> Guys, come on now. <laughs> oh, boy. You, if you are anywhere near this woman, you need to run for your life. This woman is just sending you straight to hell. One way ticket. I hope you guys are hearing her. Let's continue. To draw others away from the shepherd, the shepherd of Paul. So that's the meaning of why Paul is saying here, others preach out of goodwill and a loyal spirit toward me. The latter preach Christ out of love because they know that I have been put here by God on purpose for the defense, for the defense of the gospel. But the former preach Christ insincerely out of selfish ambition, just self-promotion, thinking that they are causing me distress in my imprisonment. So then, what does it matter? What then does it matter? So long as in every way, whether in pretense, for self-promotion or in all honesty to spread the truth, Christ is being preached. And in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. So Paul's saying there are people that are preaching insincerely, meaning they are not preaching because they were sent by God. They are not preaching, like as ministers, they're not starting their ministries and being ministers because they were sent by God, called by God. They are not preaching out of obedience to God. They are not preaching out of their love for God. They are not preaching out of the love for people. Like I want people to be saved, healed, and delivered. And this is why I'm preaching. And this is why I have this ministry and I'm doing all of these things in my ministry. No, Paul's saying there's people that are insincerely preaching. They're preaching for none of these reasons. They're preaching purely for self-promotion. They're preaching because they are jealous of me and they're preaching out of a competitive spirit. But what's so wild, man, if anyone has the right to judge, if anyone has the right to judge a servant of God, like, wouldn't you think it would be Paul judging these people? I mean, those are false prophets, false teachers, false apostles. They were not sent by God. They are preaching insincerely. But does Paul judge them? He's speaking the truth. He's saying they're preaching for these reasons, but he's not judging them. He's not making exposed videos about them. He's not going on campaigns to try to stop them for the sake of saving God's people. That reveals a lot, right? This is revealing how important it is that we're not to judge people, servants of God. He chose to not judge servants of God out of obedience to God. I mean, people who call themselves servants of God, but we're not servants of God. He chose to not judge them, but instead he lets them keep doing it. And he even says rejoice. Now, he doesn't mean like, I rejoice. But he means, it's like, God gave me this revelation on the way to church today. I was, I was riding on the highway and I saw cars in front of me. You ever see a sticker that says Jesus on the car? Did that, did that ever happen to anybody? Or maybe a license plate or something that says something about God. Ever like bring a little smile to your face? You know, God can work through anything. God can work through anything to bring, to speak little things to you, to... I mean, there can be someone who doesn't, who's, doesn't know Jesus. And God uses a little seed of a sticker on a car that says Jesus to be a sign to them, to pull them to say yes to that invitation to church that one of you asked them to come to church with a pure heart and they didn't feel like it really, but they couldn't stop thinking about it. They didn't know why. And then they saw that sticker on the car and they're like okay, maybe I'll try it out this Sunday. But that person driving that car, they could have been full of pride. They could have been doing all sorts of sinful things. They could have been fully religious Pharisee. Maybe they even have their own ministry that they have started out of competition and jealousy and selfish ambition. But God used that sticker on their car. So would you rather have that person driving that car with an impure heart have the sticker off the car because they're fake or have it on the car? Hallelujah. That, that's, that's to give perspective, you know, and it's like this, where, where a pure vessel. Hey, if you're confused, so am I. So Catherine is telling us that it's okay. Guys, even if people have a stick on their car, what does that even mean? 
What does that even mean? Demons know God and they tremble. The devil knows the scriptures, but he's still the devil. That doesn't mean anything, guys. Okay, that does not mean anything at all. But people are clapping at their church like she's just said anything. No, it doesn't mean anything. Then she keeps this idea of like, oh, no judging, no judging. Okay, now when Paul is talking about some people are preaching out of envy and everything, this was them like saying like, okay, how come this guy is in prison? Okay, if he's doing the work of God, why is he in prison? These are the things that people are going to say, right? All who desire to live godly lives are going to be persecuted. But their brand of teaching does not believe that you can get sick, does not believe that you can go through trials and tribulation because in their mind you don't have any faith. So newsflash, this prosperity preaching has always been around. So just because somebody has the stick of Jesus on their car, guys, that does not mean anything at all. Okay? It does not mean anything at all. A pure anointed vessel of God and you come to that church, it's like you're receiving a waterfall. It's like you're standing underneath a waterfall of God's spirit, of his power. You're getting drenched by his power. And so it's affecting every part of you. It's not only healing you, delivering you of every demon, breaking every generational curse, but it's transforming and purifying your heart. It's making you fall more in love with Jesus and be more like him. Just standing underneath the waterfall. But someone who is not sent by God is preaching out of competition in wrong motives. It's like, it's like receiving a mist from the waterfall, a drop of mist. What's better, a drop of mist or nothing? Drop of mist. So it's not to say that God doesn't care and we just should, ah, oh, let everyone do them whatever they want. No, but it's to say, it's not our job to judge. It's not our place to take the place of God as a judge. It's not our place to tear down that even though it's way better if they would do it the right way, it's better for them to have the Jesus sticker in their car with a horrible heart doing other things than having the devil and hail Satan sticker on the back of their car. <laughs> that, that's what, that's the meaning. Amen? Th that's the meaning. That's the meaning of, this is not a joke. We are not to be so judgmental of these people with selfish ambition and wrong things in their heart when they could be serving the devil full out being witches and warlocks at least there people are hearing the word jesus instead of satan people are hearing the word you should worship jesus instead of you should worship satan amen that's the meaning hallelujah let god deal with them Okay, so lies upon lies, it sounds so good, but no. Guys, you are either in the kingdom or you are out of the kingdom. Okay, that's just it. So it's not like, oh, I'm half saved, a little bit saved. No, just like you are either pregnant or you're not pregnant. <laughs> There's no in between. Just, that's just how the kingdom works. You're either in Christ or you're out of Christ. So according to her, it's okay, even if they just have the, the stick of Jesus, but everything else around their life is, is, is evil. No, we don't want that because people are going to look, be like, wait a minute, we know what Jesus stands for, but everything else that this person does, it does not conform. You're going to, um, if anything, you're going to make people stay away from Jesus by your bad representation. That's why we are sitting over here, like how we did the, the video about TMR and everything, right? If you're professing to be a Christian, even Kirk Franklin, right? You're professing to be a Christian. What are you doing out here, fellowshipping, doing music with these uh, people who are representing the evils of Hollywood? Can two work together unless they agree? What fellowship has lied with darkness? So we want that separation to be clear and distinct in this world, but not of this world. So if you have the stick of Jesus, but everything else you're doing is the same th thing that people are doing in the devil, there's a, pro there's a problem. What did Jesus even say to the Pharisees? Like, you guys, you go all the way to proselyte, uh, to proselyte these people. But even when you bring them, you even make them worse twice as a son of a devil. You see what I mean? So no, we don't want to have measures of representing the kingdom. Okay. If you're in the kingdom, you're in the kingdom. If you're out of the kingdom, out of the kingdom. We, we prefer that distinction <laughs> instead of mixing, the, uh, instead of mixing, uh, uh, mixing things up, okay? We, we, we don't entertain that. But in her mind, it's okay. That's pragmatism.
Okay, that pragmatism. And she says, oh, you are a pure vessel. It's better of a mist than nothing. No, no, no. The kingdom does not work like that, guys. It doesn't work like that, guys. If anything, it, it's, it, it makes things even worse. You have the appearance, right? They, they, um, what, uh, what does the scriptures teach us? I forgot. It's right. They have the appearance, but they deny the power. Something that is effect, right? You know? How can I forget? It's actually a very good scripture, you know? Like you're denying the power of God. I need to look up at that verse, right? Like, no, no, no. We don't want you to, you know, we, we, we don't care about the appearance. We want the real thing, okay? And so it's okay that it drives us crazy. Not, it's okay that it makes us, it gives us the, the righteous anger of God to see these things, to see these impure motives, it's okay that we feel that righteous anger, godly righteous anger. It's good. It's good to feel this roaring lion or lioness heart for God's people to not be deceived, for their eyes to be opened and for them to be in the truth. That's good. But we need to know the right thing to do to help lead others to the truth. It is not to take the place of God as judge and tear these people, these ministers, that have the wrong motives down. That's not our place, but we can do something. And what we can do is be the light. We, we can be the light of the world. Fight the darkness with light. Don't fight darkness with darkness. That won't, that won't lead people to the truth. That's always our calling is to be a bright light, to lead people to Jesus. And so to show love to sh instead of judgment. And how are we going to do that if we are not using the scriptures? How are we going to show the light without the Bible, without the truth, without the truth? How? We are to expose the deeds of darkness. How are you going to do that? You have to judge and you have to judge using the scriptures. That's being the light. So what we should be doing is testifying of the truth of how our eyes have opened up. If you are in a ministry, those of you here planted at Fivefold Church, be loud and proud of what Jesus is doing here. If you, you know, feel, if you feel in your heart, you know, I wish people you know, weren't deceived by the people out there, whether it's the lukewarm ministers, whether it's the ministers with pride in their hearts and preaching out of selfish ambition and, 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 and competitiveness. So make the light, make your light brighter. Point people to where the truth is, where the real is, and let them make their own decisions and make their own decisions to judge the fruit. Instead of forcing people, this is the real fruit, that's bad fruit. I'm forcing you to come to the real good fruit. That's what people are doing when they're taking the place of judge, the judge of God. They're saying, nope, you're disqualified to be in ministry. And it's literally not giving people even free will. Let people have itching ears if that's what they want. Let people be lukewarm if that's what they want. <laughs> Let people do what they want. Free will. We should be the brightest light we can be so that we can raise attention. Guys, <laughs> let people do what they want. If, if they want to have itching ears, we let them have itching ears. Then, why, then what's the point for us to be, uh, what's a great commission, right? God teach them to obey all that I have commanded. Teaching them all that I've commanded you. Jesus commanded us to do the Great Commission. So how are we going to do the Great Commission if we are just letting people to do whatever else they want? And then our answer is like they have free will. And yes, it's fine. They have itching ears. Like, no. We are to warn people. That's what the teacher, the Bible teaches us, right? You know, uh, be discerning, Right? Watch out. Beware of the false prophets. Beware of false teachers. Beware of false prophets. So why is Jesus telling us to be aware of these false prophets? If the premise is for us just to do whatever else we want, let people be whatever we want. Like, no, no, no. It cannot be so. We are to snatch them out of the fire. Even hating the garments itself, right? That's what Jude is saying, right? We are to snatch people out of the fire. These are the things that we are called. These are the things that we are supposed to be doing. And this letter is telling us like, no, let them be. They are going to fire. They are going over the cliff. We should just let them be because they love itching ears. And because, quote unquote, they have free will. What is that?
Huh? Remember, like human beings, right? We are not robots. Do we have free will? Yes, we have free will. But wh what is our will? Our, our nature, right? By nature, children of wrath, right? Our nature is to is, is sinful natures. So yes, our free will, everything else that do in our inclinations is to do evil. That's what we are. So that's why we call out for people because Jesus is calling out his people. His sheep are going to hear his voice and they're going to follow him. Okay, so these are the things that we're going to do. We're going to spread the word. We're going to plant the seeds. We're going to water. Only the Holy Spirit is able to bring the increase. But this woman, this fake apostle is telling us that no, just leave them alone. Let them be. But then she's also telling us that we need to show them the light. Which is it, Catherine? Make it clear, please. Let us know. Oh, my goodness. She actually said that, guys. You don't see me saying, okay, this minister, they're lukewarm. I expose them. Instead, I preach about the importance of not being lukewarm, of being on fire for Jesus, surrendered fully, and what the church should look like, and what you should be receiving in your life as a believer, how you should be equipped. And I let you make your own decision. But I don't say, don't go here, don't go to this minister, they're lukewarm, this is their name, this is their church name, I expose them. Right? You know, I've, I've encountered what Paul has encountered. I've encountered uh, ministers operating out of competitiveness and starting ministries after trying to tear me down and copying what I'm doing. <laughs> I've experienced this. But instead of, of showing, look, this person is fake. Look, this person has impure motives. Look, this person has pride and jealousy. Instead, I preach the importance of purity in the heart, the importance of humility, the importance of looking at, this is what fruits are. Y you know, this is how it's supposed to be. And let people make their own decisions. You speak the truth. You shine your light. You be the best vessel of God you can be for Jesus. You keep your eyes so locked on Jesus, walking your, running your own race, staying in your own lane, not being concerned with what this person's doing, what this person's preaching, how this person's ministering, how this person's competitive over here. You focus on Jesus so that he can pour his spirit, his anointing, his light into you so you can be such a bright light that people could be attracted to your ministry, ministers. I speak this to ministers. Let people see your light instead of showing your darkness and pushing people away because they see your fruits. They see your critical, judgmental fruits. The people of God are not stupid. God is opening up eyes. So you're shooting yourself in the foot when you be this judgmental spirit, condemning spirit upon others, when you put that upon others. Be the light. Be full of love. Be like Jesus. Amen? Guys, right now we are in trouble with the Apostle Catherine Creek. We are being judgmental. Okay, we need to be the fruit. That's all she's saying. No. Like, lady, you need to stop preaching. Stop being uh, an apostle and sit under good sound teaching. Because you are just leading people astray. Because even, I mean, or oh, even the false teachers, women, false teachers that I know, I think this one, I'm telling you, she, she's just crunched the number one. Okay, because even Beth Moore wouldn't do the, even Sarah, honestly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, unbelievable. Man, and the people are sitting there, they're taking notes. What a shocker. What is it that she's saying that these people are... are I cannot believe for the life of me, honestly. Because to me, I'm like, no, no, no. You are not saying anything, okay? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so now she's grooming her audience to be, you know, if you hear those things, just know like, okay, these people are big judgmental. This is just a critical spirit. That's what she's trying to do over here. I'm like, no, 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 no. The stuff, I mean, like this lady just went on to say that just let people be quote-unquote free will but now you're grooming your own people like no they shouldn't be listening to those people which is the catherine if they have free will they should be able to listen to those people according to your own uh standard okay john said to him teacher we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not accompanying us as your disciple but jesus says do not stop him for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be, be soon afterward to speak evil of me for he who is not against us is for us so we see um, 
John saying, teacher, I don't like that this person isn't like coming to you and being a disciple of you, but they're casting out demons. Jesus says, stay focused, John. Keep your eyes on me. Let him do that. We're not going to stop him. So why are we trying to stop people today? Our job, that is not our job. Our job is to stay focused on Jesus, shine our lights, and draw people to Jesus through our light. That's how we can lead people to the truth. That's how things will be exposed. This is truth. This is not. By us shining our light. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is what God is doing right now. He's removing this. This is so common. It's become far too normal today for believers to be judgmental of other believers. For believers and servants of God being judgmental towards other servants of God and believers in general. This has become far too normal. And the body of Christ, many don't realize that this is wrong. Many don't realize that this is impure. And So all this, don't judge, okay? <laughs> Do not be judging, judging. Just be the light. How are you going to be the light? How are you going to be the light? It's not just you being the light, right? Like we have the source and our source is the word of God. But obviously, she does not believe in that. And the stuff that she says is straight up in contradiction with the scriptures. At every turn, everything that she said, it's actually the opposite. It's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. And people are sitting up. Usually, if you're reading your Bible, sooner or later, you're going to find out like, no, no, no. This is not a woman to be following. And then she says that, oh, people are jealous of her ministry. I guess when people are calling her out and pointing out these things, she sees that as judging and she sees that as people uh, being critical of her. But she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand. Like most people who are being critical, like right now, like the whole time, right? It's just her. everything she said, I guess like, no, that's not what the Bible teaches, right? Nothing about her. Like, okay, she calls herself an apostle, which it shouldn't be, but nothing about her. You know what I'm saying? So, because, you know, she's a very beautiful young lady, woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? You can use your gift. You can be doing these things, but do it in the way that honors God using the scriptures. Right now, you're leading people astray. So no, we are not going to shut up about it until you stop. If you not stop, like, this will just be it. Okay? <laughs> you, you're just going to be, uh, you, you find yourself people talking about your ministry, instead of people talking about your ministry, sending people to your ministry, now we are warning people to stay away from your ministry, to leave that ministry, because that is not of God. That's not the ministry of God at all by any stretch of imagination, because you are teaching against the word of God. You know, this is, uh, this is very sad. So this is, uh, this is not good at all. This, they have to do, you know, somebody's being... Uh, so somebody's being delivered, you know, at the end. So they did play music, so we won't be able to share that. But the main thing you can see, this is a lot of people who are who are dysfunction, okay? These are a lot of people who are dysfunction. They are getting delivered. And I do see, I'm very conflicted with the people who go to uh, to these places, and there's people who do get, you know, how do I say this? So, even if, as bad as everything else that she has taught, all these things, somebody can still hear the word of God in there and somebody can actually be saved in there. Why? Because God is the one who saves his people. Why? He can use anything to save anybody. So God can still save um, people despite this uh, heresy, heretical stuff. But just because God can do that, we're not going to sit back and be like, oh, it's fine, right? As they say, God can draw a straight line with a crooked stick. But we're not out here intentionally looking for crooked sticks, right? That's us putting God to our test. So when we see people getting involved in this type of ministries, we are definitely, we are supposed to warn them, right? We are supposed to warn them. We are supposed to witness to them so that they can, you know, they can come out from among them, right? A little leaven leavens the whole lamp. Come out of Babylon, okay? That, those are the things that we want to uh, make noise so people should come out. Now, 
I so there are other people who don't know they are there innocently and then there's other people who know they are so comfortable because they want tickling ears, right? Because the last days people are not going to endure, endure sound teaching, but they are going to accumulate themselves, teachers, to be tickling their ears. So there is people like that as well in, in, in these uh, situations. But Catherine, because she is a teacher, she's a woman with no excuse. She will be judged accordingly. She can repent. She's alive and well today. She can change. But as of right now, what she is doing is absolutely against the word of God. So we definitely call her out to repent and to stop misleading people astray. So, yes, that still stands. Okay? So she could be doing it out of ignorance. She could be doing it knowingly. But being ignorant is not going to cut it before, before God. Because God has revealed himself in creation through your conscience and through his word. So she has access to all those things. So she can never say like, okay, I didn't know. All those people who have warned her, according to her, she just judges it up like, oh, they are judging me or they're jealous of my ministry. Like, no, stop and take a look and see if whatever they're saying is actually true. But she doesn't want to do that. So she is accountable. She is accountable. So yes, we loudly call out uh, Catherine Creek to repent and believe the gospel while it is today. And also, all the people who go to that church, who follow our ministry, we also call them to, to leave that place, come out from among her. You be separate from her. She's misleading you. Whether you know it or not, but that's what's happening. So we are warning you. We are warning. This is a warning. All lies will be exposed. That's all. All lies will be exposed. That's all.